Hi, this is Ms. Skokin again. We're continuing on our studies of polynomials with section 6.5, Solving Polynomial Equations. Our objectives for this section are factor polynomials and solve polynomial equations by factoring. And our vocabulary includes quadratic form and prime polynomials, those which cannot be factored. So that's that definition. Quadratic form we'll take a look at in a little bit. And we have several different techniques for factoring polynomials. Pause the video right now and read through these and then we'll talk about them with some examples. As we saw in chapter 5 when we talked about factoring quadratics, we're always going to check for the greatest common factor first and then we're going to use these different techniques, checking for difference of squares, sum of cubes, difference of cubes, and grouping techniques as well as perfect square trinomials uh, that we can factor and general trinomials that we can factor using the British method which we saw in a video in chapter 5. So let's take a look at example number one, check for the greatest common factor and then with once you factor out the greatest common factor, factor the remaining trinomial. Now the ex uh, example Number one, the directions are solved. So once you've got it all factored, remember you're using the zero product property to solve and you're going to end up with a solution set. So pause the video now, try this out, and then turn the video on when you're ready to check your answer. Once we factor the remaining trinomial and then solve using the zero product property, we come up with a solution set of negative three, zero, and six. The next example is a great example to use factoring by grouping. They're actually in a good order, so find the greatest common factor between these and find the greatest common factor between these. Hopefully once you do that, the remainder of the factoring will come back to your memory and you'll be able to have no trouble factoring those. So pause the video and check your answer when you're done factoring by grouping example number two. Now that you've turned the video back on, you can check your answers for number two. Just a quick note, the instruction says factor, not solve. It's not an equation anyhow, so we can't solve for the value of x. The only thing that we actually can do is factor and simplify it, or not simplify, I'm sorry, but put it in factored form. We're going to use grouping to also factor number three. This one, believe it or not, is actually a little, uh, is easier than it looks just to look at the polynomial to begin with. And just a quick note, this is a polynomial in two variables, not one variable. You'll notice that there are x's and y's, both. The a's, b's, and c's, we don't know if they're, they're going to be variables or they're going to be constants that we plug in. We're going to Treat them the same way, however, and when we factor, we're just going to group together. Take a look, once again, at what the greatest common factor is between the groups that you set up. And th this, again, it's in a good order for you to factor by grouping. Sometimes you're going to need to rearrange things so that you can find some really good groups to factor. But these are already in a good order. So pause the video now, try to factor by grouping, and turn it on when you're ready to check your answer for number three. On these examples, one, two, and three, once we factored, whether we use grouping or we use general factoring, greatest common factor, etc., we were able to stop. We came up with our factored form and we didn't have to go any further. On the examples on the next page, we need to go a little bit farther. We're going to, of course, look for a GCF first, and then we're going to check the pattern. In this case, we got, have a hint. We're going to find a difference of cubes. But once we find that difference of, or once we factor out the GCF, we factor out the difference of cubes, what we need to do is make sure we memorize the pattern. Otherwise, it's very difficult to uh, reason it out unlike when we're factoring quadratics or perfect square trinomials. So we're going to need to memorize the pattern for difference of cubes and sum of cubes. Try that now following the pattern. Write down the difference of cubes formula here so that you can see it when you're using it. So we're going to have that a cubed minus b cubed form written right here and then we're going to follow that once we factor out the greatest common factor. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your factoring for number four. You can see from my work that I've kind of color-coded using the pattern the difference of cubes. So we pull out the GCF, then we exactly follow the pattern which we have memorized. N example number five, uh, make any corrections that you need to and then we'll continue on to example number five. 
In example number five, we're going to factor by grouping first, and then we're going to check the pattern and see if we recognize something from one of the patterns that we have on the previous page. Now, even though in our notes we have these hints, when you're factoring on a quiz or on a test, you're going to be expected to follow these strategies. Figure out the GCF, pull it out first, look for patterns, check for grouping. Remember, if you have four terms or more, grouping is usually going to be a great strategy. So pause the video now and using the strategies on the previous page and in the example number four, see if you can figure this one out. Ch turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answer to number five. Okay, this one took a little bit more finagling, but as you can see, I've written some notes for you. So if you had any trouble with this, make sure you write down the notes, check your work. This is not something to be done in your head. Write it down so that you can avoid errors. And again, remember that memorizing those patterns is going to make it a lot easier. Pause the video if you need to write down your work. If you're ready to go on, we're going to take a look at something called quadratic form. And it's similar to what we did in chapter five, but a little bit different because it's not really a quadratic, but we're going to treat it as a quadratic. We're going to put it in a quadratic form to make it a little bit easier for us to factor. And our notes say an expression that can be written as a, which is some number, some coefficient, times u squared plus b times u plus c, where a, or the leading coefficient, is not equal to zero, and u is an, is an expression in x. And this is said to be in quadratic form. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to set something up. It's kind of like a dummy. We're going to set up something that we're going to call u. And we're going to say let u equal to, in this case, we see that we can use x cubed. We have an x to the sixth and an x cubed. And then we have a constant. So if we do this substitution, then instead of having 2x to the sixth, we're going to have 2 u squared plus x cubed now becomes u and then plus 9. Once we see this, this looks like a perfect square, or I'm sorry, this looks like a trinomial, a quadratic trinomial, and we would be able to factor if we write things in quadratic form. In this case, our instructions just said write in quadratic form, and so that's what we've done. Remember that this is the same thing as saying this. Okay, so we've written it in quadratic form and our final answer for a question like this one would be this. Because even though we've used the u as a substitution to help us out, we're not going to use the u in our final answer. What we want to do is write that original expression in quadratic form, so it has to be back in terms of x. All right, we're going to take a look at another example, number seven. We want to write it in quadratic form. So see if you can think of what u should be this time. And in this case, what we want to do, think about it this way. Here we had a power six, and we wanted to write it in quadratic form. And remember, quadratic form means it's going to have the power two. And we wrote it in three. So it was x cubed. This time our power is 10. We want to write it in quadratic form, which is a power of 2. So this time our u is going to be equal to x to the fifth power. Now rewrite it and then reverse the substitution. Check your answer in a minute when you turn the video back on. So if u is equal to x to the fifth, then u squared is equal to x to the fifth squared, which is x to the tenth, which is a number that we have in our original expression, 7x to the tenth plus 6. We substitute in the u, and then once we're able to factor it out properly, showing it as 7 times x to the fifth squared plus 6, we have our final answer. So this is a strategy that <coughs> you're going to use on example number 8 also. Now, this time, we want to write it in quadratic form. Let's see if we can. In this case, we're going to say that u is equal to x squared, because our power is to the fourth. So this, then, would be rewritten as u squared plus 2u. 
And we have an x left over because we have x cubed. So when we rewrite it in terms of u, we still have an x left over. So we would have 2 ux minus 1. Now the fact that we still have this x creates a problem. And this means this expression cannot be written in quadratic form because we can't write it only in terms of u and then substitute back. And you will be expected to recognize when and when you cannot write in quadratic form. All right, let's take a look at the next example on example number nine. Our instructions say once you have an equation in quadratic form, you can use factoring, completing the square, or the quadratic formula to solve. So up till now, we've just been rewriting it in quadratic form, but now we're going to go further and we're going to solve expressions. So, or I'm sorry, solve equations. So on number nine, we want to solve the polynomial equation using the factoring techniques that we've talked about in this section, as well as rewriting it in quadratic form if we need to do that. So pause the video now, and I'll just give you a little hint. On number nine, you're going to need to do a difference of squares factoring once you pull out the GCF. So pause the video, check your answer in a minute. So our answer to number nine is a solution set containing zero, positive seven, and negative seven. Remember that we can write in shorthand the plus or minus seven to show that we have both values. Example number 10 is going to be one where we are going to use quadratic form to help us factor and then solve the equation. So we're going to set it up first and we're going to use the expression u to stand for x squared. So u squared then is going to be x to the fourth. So let's substitute that in first of all. Once we've substituted that in, what we're going to be doing is trying to factor this. So we need two numbers that will multiply to positive 100 and will add to negative 29. See if you can figure out what those are. Pause the video now and turn it back on if you figured them out. And if you haven't, turn it back on and we'll continue on from that point. Okay, so when we're trying to find two numbers that multiply to positive 100 and add to negative 29, we start at negative 1 and negative 100. We see that those add to negative 101. That's not going to work. Negative 2 and negative 50 are going to add to negative 52. That's not going to work. And then we have negative 4, the next number that it can go into 100 evenly. It multiplied to negative 25 ends up at at 100. If we add them, we end up at negative 29, and so we have the number that we're looking for. So we can show the factors then as u minus 4 and u minus 25. And that's equal to 0, because remember we are going to end up solving. Now that we have this, we need to plug back in our x squared for the u. So show that substitution and then see if you see any patterns. Once you plug back in that x squared instead of the u, you see we have a combination of two different difference of squares. So we need to factor further, we're not done. We know that on the left hand side we're going to end up with x minus 2, x plus 2. And in the right hand difference of squares we're going to have x minus 5 times x plus 5 all equal to zero when we multiply them together. So what we're going to have in our solution set then is going to be x is equal to 2, x is equal to negative 2, so that's x is equal to plus or minus 2, x is equal to 5, and x is equal to negative 5, again plus or minus 5. So our solution set is going to contain plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5. Numbers 11 and 12 are very similar on the next page. I'd like you to turn off the video now and I'll just give you a hint. In number 11 we are going to end up with some imaginary numbers as a solution and in number 12 we're going to need to use the quadratic. So pause the video now and check your answers when you turn it back on. If you had trouble with number 11, make sure you write down all of the notes. Then take a look at number 12 and check your answer. 
Okay, we're just about out of time, but check your answers, write down anything that you were unclear on, and you'll have practice problems to work on in class.